Welcome to the second part of our podcast that is talking about the FDA and their current ability to regulate antibiotic use in livestock. In the first part, we basically looked at the timeline of the FDA's development of their policy on antibiotics over the past 80 years to find that nothing really has been done. Nothing is really enforceable. They've had recommendations, but nothing is actually happening on that front. So the second part of the podcast examines some possible reasons of why that may be. So why has the FDA been rendered helpless? Congress has repeatedly blocked its efforts. If the FDA, its scientists, and its resources are all in place to recommend the safest actions to Congress, and Congress, who has no expertise on the issues of science, continually rejects them, why? Like in all government, representatives listen to the strongest voices. In this case, the strongest voices are generally the companies that stand to profit from the usage of their drugs or the feedlot operations that need antibiotics to compensate for the cramped, unsanitary conditions of their farms and prevent the spread of disease. They have a strong interest and millions, if not billions of dollars, lobbying to constantly convince their representatives, whom many of these companies, especially in strongly agricultural districts, have provided the needed campaign funds that got them elected in the first place, but that it is in the representative's best interest not to rock the boat. Meanwhile, on a relative scale, the public doesn't care nearly as much. There are some activist groups, and awareness of antibiotic use in the public is definitely spreading. But as a whole, there's a lot less pressure on Congress coming from the public to change current practices than the big money in operations that pressure Congress to maintain the status quo. Then should we be surprised if Congress repeatedly over decades essentially castrates the FDA's ability to do its job? This isn't just a story of corporate corruption. The public is responsible as well. And while mailing our representatives can have an effect, it requires a massive amount of people unified at the same time about the same issue, which is hard to accomplish. So it seems a lot of the ability for change, whether regarding antibiotic use or any issue really, is strangled because it just hasn't had priority in our consciousness. One explanation for this is because there have been few dramatic causal events or images to drill antibiotic resistance as a problem into our minds. Whereas gun control, global warming have a clear cause and effect relationship with, with our existence day to day, antibiotic resistance is a much more insidious, less visually relatable problem. And given their visual immediate nature, these other issues are now close to seeing some change, which is awesome. People all have an opinion on them because our visual media has presented them to us day after day. However, despite the fact that at least 23,000 people die each year in the U.S., according to the Center of Disease Control, because of antibiotic resistance, these faces aren't nearly as presented or recognizable by the media as, say, a robbery or a shooting would be. So what does it take to get our attention? It seems scientific studies are not as dramatic or influential as breaking news, so how do we reach people? What other avenues are there? Currently, concerns over antibiotic resistance are gaining some traction because of how people are choosing to spend their dollars. Subway have recently announced that they will no longer use meat treated with antibiotics, mostly because people are choosing to put their dollars elsewhere. Or maybe with, in their case, it's more of a PR stunt, but no doubt they'll continue to source food as cheaply as possible. However, it, it's a step. It's a step forward and an indicator that even though we don't have as much direct access to our representatives, we do have two other instruments of change. Where we spend our dollars and how much we actively spread our thoughts and what we know with our friends, colleagues, and family. Especially with social media, we each now hold such a huge amount of power that surpasses our own individual voices like in the past where you could write a representative and you know, you're one person, you hope other people do too. Now we can spark curiosity and change by hundreds or thousands just by posting an article or a statement or an infographic or a meme or a picture. And I suppose with grass, we're trying to raise questions through the heart. You know, that's our way of doing it by exploring food industry issues in the fictional format. But we all have ways unique to our individual voices and talents to build awareness. And I wholeheartedly believe that our job is not to convince others. You know, I could say anything I want about antibiotic resistance and you could say bugger off i don't believe it and you know that's that's your choice but we can at least make people more aware perhaps than they already were we can give the information 
we can provide what they didn't know and then let let them make the, the judgment call. And I believe it is the management and withholding of information that creates the majority of problems in our society, the manipulation of it. And I believe as a whole, humans would gravitate towards a common good if the majority of the time we all shared similar, complete information. But that's enough of what I have to say and what I think about the issue. We'd be curious to hear what you think and what your reaction is to learning about the timeline and if you have anything to add to it that we may have missed out on. So please do tweet at us or engage us with Facebook and we hope to hear from you. Thanks.